everybody and welcome to Music with Meg's Violin School. It's lesson two and today we're going to be learning about the bow hold. Everybody follow me, it's music with Meg. So last week we learnt how to hold the violin and I hope that you've been practicing this week. Let's just remind ourselves. Our violin sits on our left shoulder between our chin and our shoulder. And our left hand goes up here on the fingerboard and there's a nice space between our hand and the fingerboard. But for now, we can put our violin down because we're going to start with our bow. Now when you get your bow out, there should be no gap between the horsehairs and the wood of the bow. But in order to play our violin, we need there to be a nice gap there. So to do this, we tighten the bow using this nut at the end, clockwise to tighten. So you twist that nut and keep watching your bow. Now it's very tempting when you're beginning to tighten your bow too much, and this can really damage the bow. So what we're looking for is a gap about that wide. If you're not sure, the good way to test is to put your pinky finger in the middle of the bow. It shouldn't be touching the wood or the horse's hair, but that's about the thickness that we're looking for. The next thing we need to do is put some rosin on. Now you don't need to put rosin on your bow every day, so if you've already done it, then don't do it again. You probably only need to rosin your bow once a week, but putting rosin on our bow helps it to stick to the strings. Now we're ready to go. So we're going to pop our bow down for a second and we're just going to work on what our right arm is actually doing. It's very important that we get this right and this is where a mirror is going to come really handy. So pinch your hand together like this, like a little duck. This is our bow hold for now and we've got an invisible bow and we're going to move the bow backwards and forwards across the string. Now let's just pay attention to what our elbow is doing. Our elbow is opening and closing. That's the only movement at the moment. We're not bowing from our shoulder like this. Everything comes from here. Open, close, open, close. So that's the main movement, our elbow opening and closing. But as well as our elbow moving, our wrist is doing some little tiny movements too. And those movements are pushing and folding. If you watch my wrist here, you'll see that it's pushing down and folding back up. And that helps us to keep the bow in a straight line. So while our elbow opens, our wrist is pushing. And while our elbow closes, our wrist is folding, pushing, folding. This will help our bow to stay in a straight line. Finally, we also are going to be doing a little bit of chicken arm. Now not too much, but when we're crossing the strings we do need to lift our arm up and down to help us keep the bow on the strings. So those are our three movements. We've got the elbow opening and closing. We've got the wrist pushing and folding and we have the chicken arm going up and down. Practice that and then let's pick up our bow and practice with the real thing. So let's learn our bow hold. Let's use our left hand to hold the bow somewhere in the center here and with our right hand we're going to learn the bow grip. So your thumb needs to be bent underneath the bow here. If you can see this little bit of wrap on your bow, your thumb should sit in a little gap just by that wrap. And the rest of our fingers, the second, third and fourth finger are going to wrap around the bow on top like that. Find a way that feels comfortable for you, but it should look something like this. And our pinky finger sits on top of the bow like this. And it should be roughly above the little dot that we've got at the end there. Now try and keep your pinky finger bent. If you're like me and you're double jointed, you will have a really hard time bending your pinky finger. So in this instance, it's a case of do as I say, not do as I do. 
if you see that my pinky finger is looking a bit funny, that's because I'm double jointed. Try and keep your pinky finger bent. Now when you're ready and you feel that that position is nice and comfortable, let's try letting go with our left hand. You should feel the weight of the bow. You should feel the most weight on your pinky finger and you can use that finger to lift the bow up and down. So let's practice that. Press down with your pinky finger and the tip of the bow should go up and let go with your pinky finger and the tip of the bow will go back to normal. Let's try again. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Now let's practice some nice smooth bow strokes before we pick up our violin. Now just like before, we're going to open and close our elbow. Remember those other parts of our body that are moving too. We're moving our wrist, that's pushing and folding, but we're not moving our shoulder at all. Open and close. Your bow should be going over your shoulder. Well done. Now let's pick up our violin. And let's hold the violin nice and comfortably. If you're comfortable holding with your left hand up here, then go for it. But if the weight of the violin is feeling a little bit too much today, then support the weight by putting your left hand where mine is. Now you don't need to worry about the left hand because we're just going to bow the open strings today. So let's begin with the A string. We're just going to do one beautiful long bow stroke. So let's begin at the nut. Your elbow should be lifted like mine. Don't be tempted to collapse your elbow. That's not gonna get us anywhere. We want a lifted elbow. Again, not too high, just there. And let's bow one nice long stroke on the A string. When you get to the tip, take your bow off and start again. Very good. Now you should feel that as your elbow is opening, your wrist is pushing down. If we bow without adjusting the wrist, it will look like this. And we don't want the bow to do that. So this is where you can use your mirror. Watch your reflection and make sure that your bow is staying between the bridge and the fingerboard. Here we go. And again. One more on the A string. Well done. Now that is called a down bow, when our bow is going in a downwards direction across the strings. And the opposite is our up bow. So let's practice an up bow. Our bow is at the tip like this. So it should be a big long stretch on your arm. Try and get it as close to the tip as you can. Now, this time we're bending our elbow and as we bend our elbow, our wrist is going to fold like this. Let's practice. Can you see how my wrist has folded? Very good, one more. Good job, everybody. Now remember, if you're getting tired, just pop your violin under your arm Give your arm a little bit of a shake and get ready to go again. Now we've learnt our down bow and we've learnt our up bow. So let's put them both together. This time we're going to start at the nut, the bottom end of the bow. We're going to bow a long down bow. And as we get to the end, we're going to bow back up again. And we're going to try and make this as smooth as possible. So you really need to think about what you're doing here and as you get towards the tip or the nut of the bow, you need to slow down and think about moving in the other direction. Here we go on the A string. Now make sure you keep an eye on your reflection in the mirror because we want that bow to be traveling nicely between the bridge and the fingerboard. Now I'm going to show you a few common bowing mistakes and hopefully 
you'll be able to hear when the violin doesn't sound quite right. So the most common thing for beginners is to put too much weight on the bow. We don't want to put too much weight on because otherwise you get a scrunchy sound like this. So if your violin is making a scrunchy sound, then try relaxing your arm a bit and not pressing quite so hard on the string. Now the opposite is true as well. If you're too light with your bow, you won't make a good sound either. So we want to put just the right amount of pressure on our strings. Have a play around and you'll be able to hear once you've got it right. Now another common mistake is playing our bow over the fingerboard. Let me show you what it sounds like if we do that. The string just doesn't quite sound as crystal clear as if you play in this section here. Likewise, you can make a funny sound by playing too close to the bridge. We don't want any of that, so make sure that you're bowing between the fingerboard and the bridge. Now the rosin of your violin leaves a white mark on the strings, so if you've been bowing up the fingerboard, you will see the white mark and you'll know that you've been bowing in the wrong place. Finally, let me show you an uneven bow stroke. So this is common if we're not flexing our wrist enough. And it looks like this. Now can you see and hear that the quality of the string is not as good? We want to keep our bow nice and straight so that the tone is really nice and consistent. Now once you've mastered the A string, you can move down to the D string, the G string, and the E string. Place your bow on the A string, hold it still, and now let's just practice lifting our chicken arm up and down to keep the bow on all of the different strings. That's what you're looking for when you're crossing strings. Well done today, everybody. You've done a really good job. Now this week, we can practice our lovely bow hold. Remember the thumb is tucked underneath, the three fingers are wrapped around, and our pinky finger is propped up on top like this. Remember, you can support the bow with the left hand to help you get a really good bow hold before you let go. Before we pick up our violin in our practice this week, let's just work on those arm movements from the elbow and the wrist, which will help us to get a nice straight bow. And then finally, you can practice bowing your strings, one string at a time. We're going to do a nice long down bow a nice long up bow, and then finally we can practice putting those two together with a nice down then up bow. Once you've got the hang of it on one string, you can move down to the other strings. And if you're getting really good, you can practice changing strings. <laughs> Remember to watch yourself in the mirror so you can see that your bow is nice and straight. Remember that we want to be bowing between the fingerboard and the bridge. We don't want to bow any lower or any higher than that. And remember that we need to put a nice consistent amount of pressure on the bow. Not too heavy and not too light. Now that's it for today. Remember to practice five to ten minutes every day. And don't be tempted to rush ahead. It's very important that we get our bow right before we can move on. Have fun, everybody, and I'll see you back here for lesson three. Bye. Before you go, please consider making a contribution to Music With Meg. You can join me on Patreon or via PayPal. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.